Yo! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to connect your PS4 controller to your PC and make it work for any game that has controller support. Got a game that only has Xbox controller support? Doesn't matter. Downloaded the game from a shady site because you're a filthy, disgusting internet pirate and you know the game has controller support but you can't get the controller to work for it? Well, you definitely deserve the chair. But doesn't matter! These methods will make your controller work for those games too. I'll also help you troubleshoot controller detection issues on wired and wireless connections. Alright, let's get started! Today. To connect your PS4 controller to your PC using Bluetooth, click Start, write Bluetooth, and click here to be taken to the Bluetooth system settings. If you don't have Bluetooth, you won't see a Bluetooth slider here you can turn on. If you want to add Bluetooth connectivity, the easiest and most inexpensive way is to buy a Bluetooth dongle. Click here to turn Bluetooth on if it isn't already. Make sure your PS4 controller is off, then click Add Bluetooth or other device above the slider. On your controller, press and hold the PlayStation and Share buttons until you see the light bar double flashing like this. This should happen after three seconds seconds and once it does, it's fine to put your controller down. On your computer in the add a device window, click Bluetooth and your controller should show up almost instantly. When it does, click it. You'll see a window pop up telling you it's setting up the device. When this happens, your light bar will turn off. Then a few seconds later, the window will say your device is ready to go. Most people right now will think their controller hasn't paired properly or that it's turned off because the light bar isn't lighting up. The only time the light bar will be on and remain a solid color is when you have something running in the background that uses the controller, like Steam or a game. If you press the PlayStation button, nothing happens if the controller is already on. You can also tell it's on because right here it says it's connected. It's frustrating this is normal because sometimes you won't know if the controller is still on and wasting its battery once you've closed the game. Sometimes it will literally stay on until the battery dies or until you turn your PC off. To turn off your controller, press and hold the PlayStation button for 10 seconds. I have a game open in the background so you can see this more clearly. Something I do sometimes instead of this because I am the very lazy boy is I just turn off Bluetooth because this will instantly turn off the controller and then I'll just turn it back on again. Only do this though if you have nothing else on your PC that uses Bluetooth because it would cause those devices to stop working. Have fun trying to turn on this slider again if your mouse uses Bluetooth. If your games are on Steam, Steam does a pretty good job at detecting your controller automatically, unlike some stores. To ensure everything's working fine and to change your light bar color, click Steam, Settings, go to the controller settings and click General Controller Settings. Make sure PlayStation configuration support is ticked, turn on the controller if it's not already, and then once it's detected the light bar will be a solid color and your controller will show up here. If you're using a wired connection and your controller isn't being detected, if it's currently connected to a USB 3 port, try connecting it to a USB 2 port. And if that doesn't work, try changing the cord if you have an extra one just lying around somewhere. Once you have it showing up here, click a controller and then click preferences. Here you can change your light bar's color, brightness and saturation. And if you notice any drifting in games, for example, if your in-game character moves or looks around on its own when you're not even touching your controller, you can calibrate and attempt to fix it here by allowing it to auto calibrate your joysticks or by setting the dead zones for them manually. Only look at this section though if you're experiencing this problem. Since Epic Games is epically useless at providing native support for the PS4 controller, or any other controller for that matter, as it's a piece of garbage software, I'm going to show you the easiest way to get your Epic Games library to work through Steam, so Steam can essentially do Epic's job that it should have been able to do from the very beginning. This is the best option if you don't like using third-party software. Open Steam, click Add a Game at the bottom left, and then click Add a non-Steam game. If you can't find the Epic Games launcher in this list, click browse and go to where you installed it. Mine's in its default location which is here. Select Epic Games Launcher then click open. The first time you launch it it will seemingly take forever to open the main store page but the next time it'll open much more quickly. When it finally loads just select the game you want to play and voila you'll have native PS4 controller support for your games on Epic all thanks to Steam. I bought Red Dead Redemption 2 on Epic Games a year before it was available on Steam. Nearly three years later and the low effort no IQ NPC workforce over at Epic still have an added native support for the PS4 or PS5 controller for this game and they had an extra year to do it. Through Steam I can play this game just fine using either controller. If you're a filthy internet pirate you can use the same method to add controller support for your games by doing the same process we did to add the Epic Games launcher. May as well get some enjoyment from your games before you get caught and in a month's time get beaten up by the weakest person in your prison ward. If you don't mind downloading third party software, DS4 Windows is definitely the no fuss way of getting all games with controller support to work with the PS4 controller because even though Steam has great controller support, sometimes you'll just come across a game that just doesn't have any for the PS4 controller. When Sekiro first came out on Steam, it only had Xbox controller support, PlayStation controller support came later. DS4 Windows completely eliminates this problem by tricking your PC into thinking you have an Xbox controller connected because any game with any type of controller support on Microsoft Windows is likely to have Xbox controller support by default. DS4 Windows is completely free and extremely easy to set 
setup, literally open the program and it just works. It also works flawlessly with a PS5 controller, so if you plan on buying one later and you have this program, you're already set. To download DS4 Windows, navigate to the link I've left in the description and you'll end up here. For DS4 Windows to work, you need to download Vigi I mean, Vigim Bus and have the latest Microsoft.net runtime. Once you've downloaded and installed these two things, click download the official DS4 app. Once here, click download. Once it's finished, extract the folder anywhere onto your hard disk drive, go into it and run DS4 Windows.exe. When you turn on your controller, it should pick it up instantly. The way I use this program is I just open it and forget it. That's just how convenient it is to use. Just don't forget to turn off your controller after you're done using it. I hope this tutorial helped you. I hope you'll have a good one today.